So benefits of a podcast. Again, the difference between personal and professional. Um, a podcast is a voice for your brand, personal and professional, or your business. So uh, the number one benefit is you get to connect to your audience, your clients, or your customers. Now, what that means is you have something to say. If you're hosting a podcast, you have something to say. And the audience is also going to have a personal connection to you, um, whether you know it or not. It could be a thing of love. It could be a thing of hate. Or it could be a thing of trust or in just general information. But the important thing is you're going to connect to your audience. And your audience is just your listeners, regular people like myself and Christian, your clients, or your customers if you're a business. Christian, anything to add? No, I think, I think you covered that pretty thoroughly. All right. Yeah. Uh, you get to provide information around your business. Now, like say you are a realtor. You should have a podcast because you sell real estate, you know, houses or commercial. Now, you get to provide information around that house. If you are a realtor, technically your agency should have a network account, which can have all the listings of the how all the houses, but you should also have your individual account where you can have all of your listings and information. So say, say you are a young couple, newly married, and you're looking for a realtor. You find a realtor, you check out her podcast. It's a video podcast as well. The audio gives you a podcast all about the, the house information, you know, the square footage of the, the dining room, the, the, the total square footage of the entire lot, how big the backyard is, information about local school districts, how far it is to your local supermarket. You know, what the, all the average neighborhood is like, what other people in the neighborhood are like. It's general information. You go to her, you go to their YouTube channel. You get a virtual tour of the house. You get a video of the front yard, the siding, um, the backyard, the tree, the tire swing, the picket fence. You know, the dream you are looking for. All that can be provided by a realtor just by creating content. You don't even need to speak to them. They just, just got to listen to their podcast. And now you as a realtor, that is a huge bonus for you. Because all you do is send the information over in an email. They do your own research. They like it. You go and show them the house. Done. It's closed. It probably cuts down the time for everything by a lot. I don't know. I've never bought a house. Yeah. Um, but also, if you're good, the person who just bought that house, that lovely young couple, you know, they're in they're in their early 30s. They have other friends who are just getting married. You know, they're they're uh they're their other friend and their partner are also gonna get married and buy a house. You can go, hey. Check out this podcast, this realtor, phenomenal, right? So just, you're providing information around your business and connecting with your audience or your clients. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a medium that makes any kind of information much more digestible. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And you get to do it however you want, whatever makes sense to you. You know, if you don't like being on video, just do a regular audio podcast. I think you're, you're going to be missing out, but... You know, that's just one example for a realtor. You could do the same thing with um, a chef who owns a restaurant. You could do the same thing with a lawyer. You just got to be careful with, like, you know, client client confidentiality. Hmm. But you could also promote a product. Yeah. Now, say you're a mechanic, local mechanic in Brooklyn, New York, and you want to start a podcast, but you're a, you're, a, you're a huge car buff. You could do an entire podcast on 1960s, 1970s muscle cars. Every episode – you just highlight a new car. I was about to say, it is the easiest way to showcase your skill set that is related to the product that you're selling. Exactly. And then you- It's, it's, a hum it's basically, it's a humble brag. It is. You're showing off. It's the internet, but baby. You're, but you're, it's but social you're, media, but you're, but you're doing it in a <laughs> subtle way that you don't come across you know, that way. You're just you know, showcasing. So for example, I own a, I, I own a recording studio. Mm -hmm. I could do podcasts on how to record on audio engineering, mm -hmm. on just showing the experiences of the of the artists, podcasters, the clients that come in here and do what they do. You don't actually have to be, you know, so direct. And that's the beauty of podcasting. Yeah. And that brings us to the next two points, promoting a product and selling a service. Mm. You know, if like you, Christian, uh, the Talking with Tarashek podcast, you being a co-host, you are promoting a podcast and you're also selling a service. You're, but it's in an entertaining to, way. To kind of go back to my point, the Talking with Tara Shook podcast. This is a recording studio. Um, there's a lot of artists coming here. It's mm -hmm. not exactly jumping out at you as being music related. Mm -hmm. But it is podcast related. 
and it's showcasing the capabilities and the services of the studio. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, their audio sounds pretty good. Oh, you know, their video looks pretty good. Okay. But am I saying that on the podcast? No. Yeah. But the environment and what we're doing and the quality and care that we bring to it speaks for itself. Yeah. It's- and, and, you know, just to throw out some ideas or, you know, how that relates back to, you know, sometimes myself doing podcasts. If it's not about a particular topic, um, you know, related to the business itself. And you get to demonstrate your expertise. Exactly. Like back to the muscle car, right? He has an, he's an expert in cars, right? Um, and you run ads in the beginning of any show specifically for your auto shop. And you target those ads, you know, around Brooklyn. Yeah, it's an international audience for podcasting, but you can still target it for Brooklyn, right? You, you put it on the website. It's, it's right there. There's ways to do that. And Jared Laverne um, will go into in depth on uh, automating your marketing, optimizing your syndication, um, advertising. You know, it puts more eyes on your business and product, promotional material, discount codes, donation tabs, online stores, drop shipping, merchandise. Mm. That's just the tip of the spear, guys. Well, back in the day, you had to buy ad space, yeah. buy a billboard, shoot a commercial. Yep. These are the things you had to do. If we're talking, you know, relating to promoting a product, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's not cheap. Try to get a billboard in New York City. Yeah, well, Christian, one of the questions on the Talk with podcast is how much you think a, a, a New York Times that's billboard exactly, is. That's exactly what made me think of yeah, it. Yeah, so exactly we haven't asked that yet, but that's, 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 that's the first guest game, so I have no idea how much it costs, but it's going to be fun when we actually ask that Interesting question. Interesting enough, a friend of mine had a billboard, and just to kind of give us an idea of how expensive it is, not an actual number, he only had it up for a couple hours. Oh, my God. Probably, you know, eight hours out of the day. It's probably thousands of dollars. Probably. Probably. I mean, we're talking Times Square. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, I picked, like, the, 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 the central hub. I mean, I get like, it you got to pick, pick a good time. Yeah. I mean, but is there a bad time in New York City, the city that never sleeps? Uh, yeah, I definitely. Mean, there still is a, uh, a less optimal time. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll so get that's what you had. To, that's what you used to have to do. And a podcast is something that you can do yourself. Yeah, at with, a fraction with, of the cost. At a fraction of the cost. At a fraction of the cost. That's, that's the point. To a wider audience. Exactly. International, as in the entire world. Mm. And it lives forever. Yeah. So, like, there, there's podcasts I listen to right now, Christian, where in the pandemic, I got really behind. Believe it or not, I got behind my podcast listening. And it was a wrestling podcast. And I, uh, it, it was released in August of 2020. Mm. I listened to it the other day. And the ads are still on that podcast. And as long as those discount codes and those promo codes are still active and that partnership still exists, I could still get that discount two years later. Yeah. Tell me another form of adver- like from advertising. A, from a podcast. From a podcast. An audio-only podcast. Their video is kind of poopy. But an audio-only podcast. That ad lives forever. Mm. And you never know when people are going to go back and listen to something. And, so. you know, it, but you're looking at it from the consumer side. From their side, there's always an, there's still an existing opportunity for new business. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And if you want to go to the personal side, you know, uh, another benefit of podcast is you entertain your audience. It's fun. This podcast, even this podcast right now, I was kind of like not scared to do it, but I was kind of like, how do I do this? Mm. Now I'm doing it. Having a ball. It's a lot of fun. We're doing it. We're doing it because we kind of have to. We want a business. Um, but it's also a creative outlet. You know, I have gotten great benefit from this year uh, with Talk with Tarashuk because it let me explore my creative outlets. You know, all the graphics you've been seeing and will see on this podcast is done by me. All the editing is 100% done by me. Anything you see on the posting on YouTube and the scheduling on social media, that's 100% all done by me, um, which sucks, but someone's got to do it. But it's still a creative outlet. You know, I like I like kind of exploring how to use Adobe After Effects and creating these new graphics because it's, it's a skill. It's a muscle. It's something I get to work out. And... I have gotten a lot better. And that transfers over to my professional work. It transfers over everything. Um, so that creative outlet is incredible. And you get to expand your network. That's one of the final right, ones. Right. Uh, you on know, here. Uh, build upon social skills. Although yeah. It takes a certain level of uh, social ability to, to be able to hold a conversation, ask interesting things, have interesting feedback, um, all, all of it. And you meet interesting people. Like, yeah. That's why, like, I do, I do like having. I mean, guests. I've seen some of the people you've interviewed, and it's just like, wow, you know, he's talking to this guy now. Yeah, shout out to Jill Malandrino. She was mm-hmm. the best. Yeah. Um, not saying that because she's also one of my bosses, but also because she's one of my bosses. 
But yeah, like you, you get to expand your network. You know, I, from that podcast with Jill, I got two more people from my podcast who one, I never thought would ever be a guest to my podcast. And that was actually her former boss by the name of Alan, friend of the show, Alan. Um, and we talked about, you know, like the corporate structure of America, how to be a successful business owner. And after that podcast, I asked him some one-on-one advice because it's again, networking, building your network, ladies and gentlemen. Um, he gave me some phenomenal advice that, you know, may not have been effective at that moment since it, what we were trying to do almost fell through. But year in the future, I'm going to remember that advice. So thank you to Alan for doing that. Alan, if you listen to that, you're the man. Um, mm. But expand your network. You know, I've talked to plenty of people, interesting people, because I kept my ideas open. I don't need to talk in the podcast to be fixated on one topic. That's why it's centered around select topics, plural, because I can do it however I want. I can do it however I want. And uh, it's accessible. Most people listen to podcasts on their phone when they're on the go, on the work commute. Again, cooking, cleaning, gaming, showering, trying to sleep, etc. So a benefit to the podcast is you don't need to be at the TV at 8 o'clock like it's, like it's, a, like it's a football game. Or you don't need to be there at um, – Monday night at 8 o'clock or Sunday night at 10 o'clock to watch New Game of Thrones, right? It's not appointment. It's accessible. You can do it whenever you want. You can be like me. Let's do a podcast two years later. It's still there. And guess what? It's still entertaining. You get, you're in full control. So that's what that's one thing that relates as a podcaster. You are in full control, but you also have no control because you're in full control of what you do and how you do it. But you're in no control on how it's received or when it's consumed. So yeah, it's a it's a shot in the dark. Yeah. But at the same time, as your point with the with the control aspect of everything, it's very empowering. It is. You know, being behind the microphone or potentially the camera, and it uh, it establishes you as an expert in this day and age of social media. There's a weird thing that happens when you get behind the mic and when you get behind the camera. You could be saying complete nonsense, but mm -hmm. because you're you went the distance and you put the effort in to get behind the microphone or get behind the camera, it's believable. It's freedom. It's it's you know it's creative freedom. It's so freedom. And That's uh, the last for, uh, for a lot of people, seeing is believing, and I'll add and or hearing to yeah. that to that sentiment. I mean, Christian, you're you're new to podcasting, right? I oh, think yeah. I think was was I the first one you did? Or actually, were on with for this episode, this this podcast. Um, on I did a couple podcasts. And you did a few with Jared. With Jared, yeah. um, nothing that aired, but kind of got my feet wet, so to speak. Yeah, but Jared, Jared it definitely like it things. definitely wasn't the real deal <laughs> with us doing a podcast day in day out, audio going. Uh, video on at times having virtual guests, people physically in the studio, definitely a different animal. Um, but you know, I found my voice. It took uh, probably you know, I don't know how many episodes we've done at this point. Um, probably a dozen. Yeah, you probably and me. a dozen. Probably yeah, first two, I had to figure. You know, I had to figure it out. Yeah, I kind of. It's uh, I like I'm a very I'm a very social guy, but it's yeah. different once the camera is there, or um, you know, that's really the aspect for me. I just remember your first dozen podcasts or so if not the first year it's gonna be bad it's gonna be really bad but you know who you are you know, maybe you have a knack maybe i mean not everyone's like me who's just a natural at it yeah, um yeah. but you know i i i can listen to my first 10 podcasts i hate them i they're out there except the first one the first one's not out there which is like, ironic the first podcast i ever did is in public mm. um i lost a file and i'm glad because it was awful but you gotta I, find you gotta find your voice you gotta find yeah. your your you know, sometimes you're, you know, you're there. There isn't, there isn't that much of a difference between your persona and you know what you're putting out there. Yeah, I, and I, some and sometimes it's, uh, you know, you will yourself. Um, you uh, you come alive. I do. You come alive. I do. But it it is you. It's part of you. Yeah. You so. you totally can't tell I ate Burger King before I got here. Oh, absolutely. This yeah. guy's always on fire. I was, I was just like, ugh, down in the dumps. But now, you know, I don't know what it is, man. Once, I, once, I don't know once, what it is. Once it starts rolling, you're, you're in the zone. You can't teach that either. Like, if and, you look, and if, if that's, you look in, if that's who you are, then that, then, then you should definitely do a podcast. Yeah, if you're, if you're coming to this that's series to try reasons. and find your voice from me, I can't help you. You know, you only you can find your voice. But path of self discovery. The, the free expression part of podcasting is the biggest and most important one. Podcasting isn't regulated, kind of, yet. I mean, 
It's self-regulation for the most part. But like, you know, the TV has the FCC. Yeah, as long as you're not doing anything criminal. <laughs> yeah, as long as you're not doing anything criminal. But even even that, like... I mean, you could have a podcast with you just saying curse words in different languages. You know, there was a time you, could, you couldn't even say curse words on TV. Yeah, but, but you, you can know, say whatever word you want on a podcast. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. It could be... You could be saying horrible things. <laughs> it does... It does it, and, and that's the thing. I'm not saying... I'm not promoting, you know, saying horrible things. But I'm just saying you can you can do... The, the world is your oyster. Yeah. It, I really do consider it one of podcasting that is one of the I'm most on, putting the camera on you for this one it's one of the most purest forms of communication and i do think it's one of the last bastions of free speech no censorship yet yeah you, you, you think it's i mean anything's possible i don't know you know i can't i don't have a crystal ball here but um it's it's still early enough for you to be grandfathered in i think i think but I, d- I think because like who would they go after? Who would they go after? By they, I don't even know who they is. Who who is they and who would they go after? What? iTunes. What? Oh, I, you take it off iTunes on Spotify and twenty different other places. Right. It's not. You guys are a hosting platform. There's no. There's, no, like, there's really. There's really no central nervous system. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's kind of like uh, what's it? Uh, blockchain. <laughs> kind of. Kind um, of. But I will say this to people that are thinking about doing a podcast. If you're thinking about it, do it. There are people. Like there are people that got in early on social media, got mm-hmm. in early on TikTok, got in early on on platforms like Instagram, and they're huge now. When everyone else was kind of tiptoeing the line and thinking about doing it, and maybe didn't maybe didn't go for it. Now, um, those people, a lot of those people are wildly successful. So. That's another thing. Yeah. So that's get, get get in it before it's just it's it's saturated. I don't I don't I don't I don't think it's saturated at this point. I don't think it has, I don't think it's ever gonna be saturated. Mm. I, I don't because I think it's the future. Because, you know, look at look at traditional media. And by traditional I mean, you know, cable news, broadcast media, the cable T V model, you know, the idea of ratings mm. is completely changing. The model of what it means to have successful content is completely changing day by day, year by year. So I don't think it's ever going to get oversaturated. It is, however, going to be harder to make it to the top. But I do think it's going to be more of the best will make it and not necessarily who has the most money and who is in the most control. Right. Now, let's leave that at that. Mm. Um because I don't want to get I don't want to get political and silly yeah, on this let's, podcast. Yeah, uh, let's 